Good afternoon, and welcome to Expose Yourself to Art, a show that looks at the process of creativity by inviting artists to join us in a chat about their lives and about themselves. Today we have a very special guest, Gabriella Garini, uh, who is the executive director of the State Theater. Uh, I'm not sure about her artistic background, but running the State Theater means that she's in charge of one of the central facilities that has everything to do with the art in our community. So why don't we bring her on, say hello, and talk about uh, all the things that are going on at the State Theater. So welcome, hello. Gabriella. Hi. Nice to have you here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you asking the state to be part of this. Sure. Okay. And um, before we get into talking about the, the wonderful programs that go on at the state, uh, how about sharing with us a little bit about yourself, where you come from, yeah. and especially how you got uh, connected up with the state theater? All right. Well, we'll start way, way back now. I uh, grew up in the Bay Area, uh, Cupertino, uh -huh. Sunnyvale area, and uh, I was just kind of lost there. My mom moved to Oakdale, and she had, you know, said, why don't you come and check out Modesto? <laughs> so uh -huh. that was uh, 92, so I, I've yeah. been here since then, uh -huh. and uh, Pretty much my entire life has been spent um, working behind a bar or waitressing. Uh -huh. And um, my mid-30s, I decided to uh, start college. Uh, uh -huh. And I went to school at MJC and then Stan State. And I, um, after getting my master's, I went and taught ESL for a while. Ah. at uh, Modesto Junior College, which I love, 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 love my uh, ESL students. Um, but when you're in your mid-40s with teenagers and a household to keep up, being an adjunct professor is hard <laughs> to do. That's meant right, for right. young 21-year-olds uh, fresh out of college to be driving around everywhere. And so... Uh, one of my classes had uh, been canceled one semester, and I was just desperate to work. And uh, Sue Richardson, our executive director at the State Theater at the time, was looking for a concessions manager. And we just um, had some mutual friends, and they told her that Gabby would be amazing at that job. Uh, and I, loving the state, being a regular at the state, uh, it was just a perfect mix. So uh, I've been there six and a half years now. I started uh, with Sue Richardson as the uh, concessions manager. Um, and then she left. Um, then we had Kirsty Boyette. And with her, I became the general manager. And we opened up the Jewel Theater. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, she left, uh, and then I became executive director, and we are now opening up intermission. So okay. I've just well, been... Well, be, be, before uh, we get to that, before we get to that, yeah. uh, you made the comment that, uh, you know, you've always liked the State Theater, and you were yes. a patron in some way. Tell me yes. about that, because uh, the State Theater plays an important part oh. in the... In the in our community as far as you know the things you present and it's it's kind of one of the main centers yes okay. it is yeah. um since uh 1999 i have worked downtown i opened up dues restaurant um and worked at many restaurants and bars downtown and the state theater is just this iconic location and theater that at at the time, um, mostly back in the early 2000s, people always complained that there was never anything to do. But all you had to do was go look at the State Theater. And I was already always downtown, so I always felt a very big connection to the theater. 
um, uh -huh. and went and saw many concerts, many films there. Uh, so yeah, so it's always been a part of my life since I started uh, living in Modesto. Uh -huh. It really has, yeah. And I think for you and a lot of people. Yes, and community has really been a huge part of my life as well. Um, Modesto always gets a bad rap, and um, I always believe that if you're living somewhere, you can try to make the place better um, while you're living there. And so I, uh, and everyone has their own little uh, strengths to do. So I was part of the. Um, I was a director of volunteers for the Modesto Marathon for about a decade, um, and then the race director for a couple of years. But I always loved being part of that. Um, I just always thought it was such a cool thing to have as part of Modesto. And so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you a marathon runner? I used to be, yes. A marathon oh, really? runner. Uh, I used to run long distances on trails um i've ran up to a 50k which is about 32 miles up in auburn so Jeez. yeah it's it used to be my big passion and then i um blew out my achilles and so cannot do that any longer just have to yeah. do short little treks here and there but yeah, okay i love being part of that community and it brought so much positivity to modesto yeah, uh, just like the state does. Yes, yes. So um, I had mentioned because I don't know much about you here mm -hmm. at this point, um, is that we usually have artists on here. Is there yeah. any art in your background? No, not in mine. Uh, okay. But I have raised a beautiful daughter who is a musician and plays a stand-up bass. Um, she's just very passionate about music. Okay. Uh, my son used to play piano. Amazing. He didn't really have a passion for it. He became a police officer in San Jose. Okay. So, yeah. um, but no, I love music. I love art. I support okay. it any way I can. Yeah. But unfortunately, as far as my talents go, they, they're at paint nights with someone <laughs> telling me what to do. <laughs> okay. No, it's just, um, yeah, it's just interesting. Yeah. You know, that, that, um, but here you are in the middle of it. You are in the middle I of am. all the arts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I am. And I think um, those of us who don't have the talent have um, and have the ability should support it, you know, in yeah. any way they can either buying art, showing up to art shows, sure. um, you know, managing theaters. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, anyway, you're immersed in it. Yeah, yeah. I am immersed For in sure. it. For sure. And you mentioned something uh, before we get on talking about mm -hmm. the intermission. You mentioned the jewel. Uh, yeah. Tell us, tell us about that. Uh, so the jewel is our 25 seat um little micro cinema that uh, we opened up in December of 2019. And the reason why we opened that is um, obviously we, the state theater plays a lot of films, uh, but films are actually not where uh, we make our money to keep going every month. And so uh, where we make our money is our concerts, our rentals, all those, um, larger events. And so um, we were kind of stuck. Uh, we were fighting a lot of distributors trying to get uh, the new films to mm -hmm. open at the theater on their opening date. Um, and they wouldn't give them to us because we had events going on on our one screen in the big theater. And so uh, opening up the second screen has really opened up a lot of opportunities for us because now we can continue doing these big events that are what actually bring us the money to continue. But we can also start bringing in all these films that we really feel the theater should be showing. And we're able to get them now because now we can play them on our second screen while something else is going on on a Friday or Saturday night. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. So, so distributors uh, don't have a limit on how many seats you have or something like that? No, they don't ask. But oh. now um, with a lot of these um, bigger theaters, you know, they've really tightened up their screening rooms and they only have maybe 30 or so. Obviously, they have a lot more screens, but uh, they don't ask. And we put it in our 500 uh, seat theater when uh -huh. off nights. Um, but yeah, so we're really excited. The Jewel has been amazing for that. And it's also been amazing. Uh, we rent it out uh, for a three hour uh, rental. We've been getting so many people loving to do their kids uh, birthday parties in there, anniversary parties uh, with the uh, 25 seat limit. It's a perfect little spot and you have your own little door that goes into yeah. the lobby and you have concessions there, your own restroom. So it's oh. a great little space. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So anyway, now one of the biggest reasons uh, we asked you yeah. on and you, you wanted to come is that you've recently opened a new part to the State Theater Complex. Yeah, well, not quite open yet. So oh, not quite? Oh, okay. Not quite. We are hoping to be open by late October. Okay. Uh, and our new space uh, is Intermission. And that uh, took over the old check cashing place on the corner of 13th and J. Uh, which had actually been there for, Oops. I believe. There we go. There yeah, there we you go. go. Yeah. Um, I believe the check cashing place had been on that corner for about four yes. years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone just shared a photo with me from 1984 when the check cashing place came downtown. Pretty incredible. So we uh, took that over. Uh, the board had um, some amazing ideas wanting to open up this 1930s lounge. Um, it's all ages. It's going to be this amazing community space. We're going to hold paint nights in there. It'll be home to our film school. Um, we'll have poetry nights in there. Uh, we'll just be open regular hours, Thursday through Saturday, 4 to 11, um, and then Sundays, 12 to 5. And anybody will be able to come in and enjoy an espresso or a cocktail. Uh, the inside is decorated in 1930s Art Deco. Um, as you can see, this beautiful mural behind me. Yeah, there uh, it is. Oh, yeah. my goodness. This mural was painted by Sam Dominguez, an amazing local muralist. Um, he has, I believe, one or two murals downtown. And he also just did the mural for the uh, Center for Human Services home that opened up, I believe, on 9th Street. So he has a lot of art in Modesto. He's done a few schools. And he came up with this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, mural for us. And this is behind our bar. And she is just breathtaking. I just, it, she really just sets the tone for the entire space. And um, is there a story? Is there a story connected with this? No, uh, no, no, no. He just, uh, we asked him to come in and get a feel for what we were doing. Uh, Nikki West came on, um, donated her time as our interior designer. And her and uh, Sam had a few discussions about what she's thinking. And she just wanted an artist to come up with what they felt the space needed. And this is what he came up with. Wow. Yeah. It fits, it fits the... Um... What Art Deco decor? Yeah, it Very sure does. Ways. Yeah, it oh sure does. And uh, when you see it in person with all the furniture and the wallpaper up, it's just breathtaking. When you walk in the door, it's really just takes your breath away when you see her up there. So yeah, so intermission. We're so excited. Uh, so um, like I was saying, we're going to be open regular hours. We're going to have nights on our off 
weekdays, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, where we'll be doing special events. Um, people could rent intermission. Uh, we're going to have a very classic uh, cocktail menu. Um, we uh, have very um, old school uh, drinks on there. Okay, like like what? For example, like old fashioned. Oh, we good! I'll the be there. Disney's, I'll be there. Yeah. Um, a really good Manhattan, a great dirty martini. Um, oh. I always say going to be a very grown-up bar because we're not going to have any flavored vodkas or whiskeys <laughs> <laughs> and um we have an espresso machine uh gretchen oh. peak with a uh, clayton's coffee um we'll be um using clayton's coffee and she came in and helped us with a great espresso menu and so we'll be serving some fabulous um coffee drinks and then um, I hired a, a local young lady, uh, Gabby Aiken, who's going to be our kitchen manager, chef. And we will have um, a tiny menu, about four items per night, just little bites. Uh, nothing that is going to really fill you up for dinner, but either before or after dinner um, bite for you. And we'll have a couple desserts. Uh. Yes. So, so is this space going to have regular, what, what would I say, open hours? Yes. Or is, it, or is it just going to be for special events? No. So we will have uh, regular hours uh, Thursday through Saturday from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. And then Sundays from 12 to 5. Ah. And we're going to start with those hours and then we will adjust. Um, if we need to be open earlier or later, um, as time goes on, uh -huh. we have a staff super excited, ready to go in there. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow, it's a beautiful space. And, it uh... really, it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous space. Um, it's not very big. Oh, we have a full AV system in there, so. Um, when you we uh, will do some rentals, um, you know, we can host meetings, we can host birthday parties, movie nights, stuff like okay. that. So okay. um, that'll be behind the big red curtain. Uh, well, you certainly have one customer right here. I mean, you oh, mentioned yes. a couple of things, you know, old fashions, dirty oh, martinis, and espresso. Yes. So you've got our family. Yes. So, <laughs> Excited to, to hear to, that. Yeah, uh, being someone, the right time. yes, uh, being someone that's been in the uh, bar business and restaurant business pretty much my entire life, um, I was always very excited to open up a bar somewhere sometime that served really nice wines and very classic cocktails. Okay. Um, we have right now, you know, if you go out, a lot of bars are doing amazing craft cocktails, but you can never recreate those anywhere else. And so <laughs> I always like the idea of perfecting a good regular cocktail for our guests. Uh -huh. So do you have any uh, groups or, or individuals lined up to rent this place already? Um. Not yet. Uh, we do have um, most poetry, I believe in November is going to uh, do their poetry night, which I think is the third Tuesday. No, uh -huh. third Tuesday of the month. Anywho, so we've talked to them and um, we're just holding off a little to start securing these events and rentals because we haven't even opened yet. And so we want to make sure we're, we got all of our ducks in a row and we're able to do what we are out there to do uh, uh -huh. 100%. And you said you're hoping to open uh, by the end of October? Yep. Yep. So um, I think I, yeah, I walked through it the other day. And I guess my question is, what are you waiting for? Um, well, I know it's, it looks beautiful, but there is so much little stuff that happens, uh, that you have to get ready. Um, 
a big thing. Our liquor order hasn't come in yet, so we don't oh, have okay. all the liquor yet. Um, the, we're perfecting the, the, our food menu. Um, so there's okay, yeah, the little things. It's all just the all things. the little things. Um, yeah. It was. I was at the. Um, there's a new place that opened up on Oakdale Road that my girlfriend's a bartender at. And her and I were really discussing that, that you think all the big stuff until you get those permits signed off are the really stressful things. But after that gets signed off, it's all the little things that take the longest (laughs) to get through to open up a place. So, Well, my my prediction is that people will be lined up to experience this. Yeah. This is something... um, and it's not quite a bar, but it's it's a place that people, at least this was my experience walking in, it's a place that people would like to hang out yeah. for a pre- brief period of time, come in. That's, and- that's what I'm hoping for. It's going to be a space where the music is just going to really be background music. You're going to be able to sit down in a space where you feel comfortable sitting with your family, um, having cocktails. We'll have a beautiful um, mocktail a cocktail list. Um, so there'll be a little bit for something for everyone there. Ah, wonderful. Yeah. Let's see what I've got here. Take another look at this. Let's see if I can go back. There we go. Another look at that beautiful mirror. Oh, she's so done. gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in connection with this, um, I've noticed a lot of uh, what online media stuff um, what perpetrated by your, what is he, the chairman of the board now, Sam? Yes, the board president, yes. Yeah, board president, yeah. I mean, Sam has been promoting the heck out of this. Uh, he sure has, yes. <laughs> so is he new to the board? Uh, uh, no, he's been on the board for a few years. He is just new, um, as the new president. board president. Ah. Yes. Okay. Yes, putting a lot of energy behind our social media. It's been great. Yeah. Okay. Well, it may seem like we're going backwards, but yay! Let's go back and talk about the state in general. I mean, oh my uh, goodness! You know, um, we when I I, uh, the last few years that I've been working, um, one of my biggest um, focus was to uh, really get the state theater on people's minds. Um, We would go and do a pop-up at the farmer's market for the nonprofit spot uh, every once in a while. And just to share what was happening at the state, uh, remind people that we're there. um, And when they're looking for something to do to not forget about Uh, checking what the state theater is doing. Uh, And going to the farmer's market really uh, made me realize how many people forget that the state theater is there. It's not on their radar. We would be around the corner, yes, at the farmer's market and younger families, some people just going through the farmer's market, no idea. They would know we were there, but... They just thought that we only did um, old movies and that was Uh, it. Yeah. And so I've really been uh, trying to focus on getting the state theater on everybody's mind. Like, what are we doing this weekend? You know, you check the Gallo, you check the Brendan, you check, uh, you know, in Turlock. And I wanted the state theater to really be on people's radar. So we are slowly working and cracking that, you know, getting people to start remembering that we do so many cool things out there. And uh, part of that has been going to the farmer's market, uh, doing Mm -hmm. first Fridays, uh, doing festivals. Uh, We put our uh, pop-up tent there and we just start sharing uh, what's going on at the state. Uh And so uh, and a better uh, social media presence. So all that has been working towards us 
becoming so busy. We have just, there is amazing things going on weekend after weekend, month after month. And um, like we have a great comedy show coming up this Friday night, uh, Paul Rodriguez, a uh, pretty big uh, comedian. And yes, I've heard of him. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and we're also getting some amazing first run films. Uh, we had uh, Wes Anderson's last film, Asteroid City, got that on opening day. Uh, we were able to get the Elvis movie that came out last summer, uh, um, you know, on opening weekend. Uh, we're I want to stop you for uh -huh. just a second because you mentioned the latest Wes Anderson yeah. movie. So <laughs> what's interesting is we at the um, Stanislaus County Arts Council are running a large photo contest that, oh. uh, you, we can enter people can enter between now and the middle of december and it will be on display at nisland gallery in february but the point being that we are having a lot of sponsored events in other words people pay for it isn't just first second third prize yes there are a lot of small categories and one of them is somebody um uh, Bob Bersan, I think, of yeah. the Modesto Art Museum, donated uh, $200 for the best Wes Anderson-like photograph. And it's been fun because uh, I would say half the people, maybe more than half the people uh, who see that go, what is that? Who is that? Ah! <laughs> and then you tell them, and it turns out that most of us have actually seen the movies and liked the movies. Yes. But he has a very definite uh, look. He really so, does. Yeah. Um, so I'm going, that, that I'm taking the time to talk about it. To, yes. Uh, tell people if you go to the State Theater, see the Wes Anderson yeah. movie, you, you'll get an idea of what's going on. I so. love that there is a category for that because yeah. his photography is so unique. Um, and we were so lucky to get his movie on the first run. Okay. Um, and then uh, we have coming up uh, the new um, movie killers of the flower moon. And we would have never been able to get this movie on opening weekend if it wasn't for having the Jewel Theater open. Really? Uh, yeah. So we're very excited. So, you know, good things like that are always happening. Um, and to pivot a little to more art related items, um, we play this fantastic series of films every year. It's called the Exhibition on Screen, EOS. And it's this company that puts together these kind of bioptic films uh, about artists. Oh. And um, we've had Vermeer. And um, our next one coming up is Klimt. And, yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes. And so... Our amazing operations manager, uh, Tricia Sanchez, who is uh, a fabulous artist in her own right, uh, she is works closely with the lady at the uh, Dragonfly, Barbara, and they got together and thought, in conjunction with these films, when we bring them, why don't we do a paint night? And so we have these amazing paint nights that right now we set up the tables in the lobby. They start at five o'clock and uh, you have two hours and then the film starts at seven and Barbara uh, comes over from Dragonfly and depending if the painting is a little more difficult, uh, she'll sketch them out first so that you have something to go by. So no talent at needed and uh she takes everybody through this paint night they talk a little bit about the artist and uh, their style and they get to make this painting and then they get to go in and watch a movie on the artist that uh, they have just painted mm -hmm. and it has become 
so fun. We have a group of people that have really just come to every single one. They're about every two to three months. Um, and they're just super fun. And of course, painting in the state theater is just feels so iconic, you know, yes. with the uh, chandelier above you and the gold dome uh, yes. um, and then being able to go watch the movie. And they're usually about $35, $40 and it includes the movie. Uh -huh. Um we did a really interesting one a month or two ago uh, based on this movie called The Color of Ink. And we found oh, yes. it. Uh, it was a gentleman in Canada who had put together this documentary um, about an artist that puts together inks with all kinds of natural uh, ingredients. And he sells his inks to all uh, types of artists all over the world. Uh -huh. And um, so that one was really fun because they came up with a, a painting that used ink and uh, really different, really fun. And there was a kind of a small world story with the uh, director of the film who is from Canada and we were in Modesto, the first theater to uh, show his film in the U.S. And uh, he was saying that it was quite ironic because he had just finished writing a long article about the 50th anniversary of American Graffiti. And he was telling us how Canadians are crazy over George Lucas, just like we are. Uh, sure. <laughs> So, yeah, so we do a lot of art-focused events at the yeah. theater yeah, right. um, for kids, too. Yeah, well, you know, uh, going back to something you were talking about a little while ago, it's saying that, you know, you're surprised that people don't know about the state theater. Yeah. Uh, but someone like me who has been involved in the arts in the community is like, wait a minute, wait a minute, how can that be? I know. I mean, I've known about the State Theater ever since it was, you know, started to be reconditioned way back yes. then. And I performed there and many, and been part of many things that have gone on there. I, like you mentioned, all the different things that go on. So, for yeah. example, uh, one of the amazing things is connected to your board president, which is Sam Pearsoff does his ill list yeah, every uh, year. show there every, every year. And it's, um, I was amazed. The first year I went, I was overwhelmed. It was like it was sold out. It and it's, sells it's, out it sells every out, year. And you can't get tickets. And it was, wait a minute, this is poetry. Right. And, and so, um, no, I mean, poets know about it. It's there. And then the other thing is um, uh, since Roy Stevens and his wife, Annalisa, have taken yeah. over opera modesto they put on um two short operas every year yeah there and it's like yeah it, the people in town uh who are involved in the arts certainly know about the state theater yes yeah and, Boy. Uh, have and i really the, yeah the opera having that um literature and just Story, I believe. Literature and story, yeah, yeah. Uh, having the opera there is just amazing. Yeah. It's just watching these young people come in and um, be part of that. My kids were part of Townsend Opera um, about 20 something years ago. So we were, I was always fan, always uh -huh. a fan of Townsend Opera, now Opera Modesto. They, it's just, such a fabulous right. organization, so professional. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, also connected with Opera Modesto was the uh, movie that they made during uh, yeah during COVID, and it had its premiere, its worldwide yes. premiere at the State Theater. Oh my! Was that not a what talent? Yes, that was one of the most amazing things that I've been part of. Uh, ah. You know, my whole life. It really yeah. was so 
I mean, really thinking outside the box. They did such a great job. Right. You right. know, and along those lines, we've really um, been pushing to do, uh, we've started a film school at the theater. Yes. Uh, we will, uh, that'll start up again in the spring. And, uh, but connected to that, we have this amazing 48 hour film festival uh, that is, we host in March every year. And uh, more people need to know about this. It is so fun. If anyone ever has an inkling to make a movie, you come in one Friday, you pay 20 bucks for you and your group, whoever you're going to make this film with. And um, our partner, Andrew Wong, will give you a genre. Everyone has a different genre. Everyone gets the same prop and the same name and the same line that has to be in the movie. And you have 48 hours to make a five minute short film in the genre that you um, were handed using the prop and the line. You come back on Sunday, turn in your film, and then a week later, the top 16 films get shown at the theater. And I have to tell you, it is one of the funnest weekends ever. We see people filming all through downtown. And some of the films that we get are amazing. I Out of this world. And uh, it is such a fun weekend. We have parents with their kids. We have a bunch of high school kids together. Adults, um, budding filmmakers. A, just all walks of life coming to be part of this. And there's cash prizes for the top two or three uh, winners. It is fun. Yeah. yeah. So this is, um, was that run the first time this past year or? Uh, no, we've had that going on now about, well, minus COVID years. Uh, I believe four or five years now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So and it so grows every year. Okay, mm -hmm. so when is when does it take place? This uh, year? Not till March. So till the March, second, okay. yeah, second weekend in March, you come and second Friday, you come and pick up your um, goods, and then that Sunday you drop off your film, and then a week later we have the uh, premiere. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, it's fun. So, um, as a representative of the Arts Council in town. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of wonderful things. You you need to get us this information. We need yes. to uh, co-mingle our advertising and get yes, this out there. Yes, we do need to do that for sure. Yeah. Again, I mean, yeah. there's so much. Um, so let's see, 48 hour film. That's honestly, it's just such a fun, fun event. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, so you also mentioned, and I don't know if, um, I got confused in my head. Yeah. You mentioned this uh, uh, art films. Is yes. that what you were talking about connected with the paint parties? Or? Yeah, the paint nights, yes. Okay, or paint nights. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, in my head, I jumped on that right away because uh -huh. I, I remember in um, my ancient history, uh, different times at theaters like the State Theater, they did, they did a lot of art films, not necessarily about artists, but about art in general, all kinds uh -huh. of And uh, the people on my board uh, have been coming up with this idea of, you know, what happened to those films? We need to, to bring them back somehow. Yeah. Maybe, in fact, they even said, maybe you should talk to someone at the State and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> see how see how they feel about uh, bringing some of these. Uh, maybe there are some modern versions of uh, yeah these art films that yep. are not not just about famous artists, but about just uh, art like in the, general. Yeah, like the Ink uh, mm -hmm. movie yeah. for sure. And yeah. you know, when they come across my desk, I really do try to um, you know grab as many as possible, but. Yeah. Really, we should collaborate a little more on bringing more of the art films in, um, mm -hmm. and mostly, you know, connected to some maybe some other event or uh, something like that. Because people love to really interact 
uh, outside of just the film. Yeah. Okay. So um, you mentioned uh, some of the other things that have gone on. You you talked about the comedian that you're bringing in. So oh, yeah. What are some of the other? Um, do you have any other concerts planned? Um, we or any, do. Any events like that? Yeah. Um, we have. Well, coming up next, we have Big Brother and the Holding Company on Sunday, October 8th. They are Janis Joplin's original band, mostly. Yeah. And uh, it's a fundraiser for the State Theater and CASA of Stanislaus County, the court-appointed special advocates for the foster kids. Uh, so that is going to be a really fun show. Um, and it's early too. The doors open at five and the show starts at six. So uh -huh. uh, the vibes are opening. Um, Steve Ashman, Joe Beretta, Dave Rogers on the drums. It's uh, going to be a fun afternoon. Uh, then we have another concert fundraiser with... Um, Acoustic Alchemy, who is an amazing jazz band. Um, and this is on Tuesday, October 24th. And this one is a uh, fundraiser for um, the Children's Hospital and Children's Garden over there on Pellendale. Uh, okay. So we, oh, yes, um, yes. I know where it is. Yeah. yeah so that one is going to be a great show. That band is so good. Um, and we are just now starting to bring back more jazz to the theater. Um, we also have a local Columbia jazz band uh, who are all local musicians uh, up in the Columbia Sonora area. Uh, they are coming, let's see, October 14th. So that one's going to be fun. That one's about a 15 piece jazz band. Uh -huh. um, really, really good. Along the lines of rock, we also are bringing the new documentary about Joan Baez oh. uh, called I Am Noise. And I just love her. And this documentary looks amazing. Uh, so that's opening up October 13th. Uh um very exciting things oh my uh, gosh so yeah. much stuff and we have yeah. a kiss cover band coming it's gonna be cold pyrotechnics in the theater um that one is gonna be fun uh, um so uh let me bring up an uh you know kind of other subject uh, here is we also in this community have a huge event center, the Gallo Center. Yeah. And how would you, how do you look at, um, hmm, how should we look at this comparison? Um, you know, we don't ever feel, obviously there's really no comparison. We're both so different. Um, you know, yeah, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want you to talk about is yeah. how are you different? Um, yeah. well, first of all, um, we are, um, a tiny fraction of their, um, budget. Um, uh -huh. we really try to focus more on community events, uh, local artists, um, connecting with the community, not that the gallo doesn't, but showcasing uh, the local artists in the theater. Um, whereas gallo is the place where you can watch these amazing shows, Broadway shows, um, you know, the touring shows that uh, are way out of our budget. We only have one good room with 550 seats, you know, gallo's got there are two rooms. One of them is a little smaller than ours, but the other one is huge. And so uh, we just really try to make sure not to overlap any of our shows with theirs. They do the same with us. Um, and so, yeah, there's 
we're just, you know, we're the little local theater and uh -huh. they're probably the one that's um, more of a worldwide style theater. You sure, know, sure. So you yeah. hear about that. There's tour buses that come to the Gallo Theater. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, another uh, follow-up question to what you're, you were mentioning, these concerts you have planned. Um, do you, uh, for example, the, the one that's coming in that's a fundraiser for uh -huh. these different, different organizations, uh, how do these come about? Do they come to you and you work on them together? Um, or, or do you have, uh, or do you come up with these ideas? So, um, Let's see, an example, the uh, acoustic alchemy that's coming in. We also yeah. have another fundraiser that I should plug for the um, Maui Fires. Um, it's going to be a really fun night of Hawaiian music, ah. dance, and food. Um, but as an example, those two fundraisers that come in um, are rentals. And so they come to me, they need a space to hold a fundraiser. And so I work with them. Um, and so they pretty much pay us a fee and we house their fundraiser for them. And uh, the state theater having the stage uh, ticketing system, we have state of the art sound and lights for bands um, uh -huh. and we're affordable. And so uh, they come to me, but some of the other bands um, and concerts we have, I just get together with my team. Uh, we get a lot of promoters that, you know, come across our desk that want to host, want us to host their comedian or their band. And so uh, we kind of go back and forth, see if they're affordable for us. And um, then we book them. Okay. Yeah. So it's a combination of both. Uh, some it people is. come come to you and you know rent the space for something they want to yeah. do, but uh, other ones, uh, well, for example, the comedian you're bringing in. Is yeah. So this is, is yeah, Paul Rodriguez. This one's a collaboration, so we're splitting profits on that one. Uh, so so who's yeah. Your so um, yeah, there's you know we don't have a one size fits all. You know, when someone asks me to rent the theater or asks about bringing a act into the theater, um, it's really important to me to sit down and talk to someone and kind of figure out what they need, what we can offer, uh, mostly if it's a community organization. We really try to make the state theater approachable for everyone in the community. Uh well, from my standpoint, it is, and it has yep. been. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, if we can just get the word out, I guess, to other people. But yes, but yes, it is. Fair, it, fair is highly, it is highly functional. It, it is, is. You know the the uh, examples I gave. You know, uh, and maybe that is one of the big differences between, uh, you know, the big space and the little space is that mm -hmm. you you do focus on the community. Yes. And make this space available for artists of all types. Yeah, we sure do. Join up, so. Yeah. Yeah, we really love it. We started also this, um, we noticed we didn't have a lot of things for kids at the theater. And so mm -hmm. uh, we started this great Saturday morning cartoon series where the first Saturday of every month, um, we show a movie at 10 a.m., but at 9 a.m., we have a craft hour that kids could come in and they, whatever the craft of the month is, um, they'll, they get to sit and do a craft for free. And then they all get to go watch a movie. And we, tickets are only $5. We go, we sell We Donuts. Anyone's ever <laughs> been we to donuts. my favorite donut place? Um, yeah. For only a dollar, which is a little less than what they pay, they um, sell them for, but we pay full price. But we really want to make this uh, event very affordable for families. And so it has really become an amazing event with 100 to 200 
people, uh, kids coming in excited to do their crafts. So um, that one has been really just, it's just so sweet to see all those kids in the theater. So excited. All the oohs and the ahs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let me see yeah. if we can, there. Maybe this is a good place to start uh, wrapping things up. Yeah. Here. So this is exciting. Uh, everyone who has worked with you has made this a a jewel in our community. Yes. I guess that's that's the word. That's the word that pops up. You yeah. Have the jewel. Yeah, it really. But it is. It's uh, it's a center for the arts in our community, and. Uh, you know, uh, I thank you for coming on. I, you know, do you have any final words or any parting, uh, parting um, thoughts? I just love being at the helm of the State Theater. I feel so honored to be leading her into this new era with intermission opening. And to everyone listening, don't forget to... Check us out. The state.org is where you will find all that is happening. And then we do have an intermission Instagram page and State Theater Instagram and Facebook. Okay. So and with your background in as a bartender, are you going to be serving drinks? Um, I probably will leave that to the staff doing that. Okay. I will probably be busy putting out a bunch of fires. <laughs> yes, I know. Right. The person it's the person in charge who does the menial things that no yep, one else. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's not my job to sweep the floor. No. Nope. You know. <laughs> so anyway, um, I thank you for being here. No. It's it's been delightful and it's nice to hear about all the yes. wonderful things that will be going on. And I look forward to talking with you. Uh, yes, me too, David. In person. We can yep, get some maybe too. some of these uh art films going again. Yeah. So, or something along that line. So anyway, thank you very Wonderful. much. Thank you for having us. Okay, really appreciate it. So we'll say goodbye for now. And, bye bye. Okay. See if we can end this. There.